Hi, my name is Matt Smith. I'm a regional motion engineer for Yaskawa, covering the Midwest, based in Chicago. Today we're going to be going over how to set up a safety option card for safe limited speed. So just a quick overview of the safety option card um, mounts on the side of our amplifiers. For the Sigma 5 generation, the form factor would look like this. Uh, Sigma 7, 100 volt and 200 volt as well. For those that aren't aware, the Sigma 7 400 volt has a different form factor, but it uses the same card and is just mounted in a different orientation. So a little overview of the internal diagram of the card itself. So showing the two different functions and how there is redundant inputs in an EDM, just like the STO input on the servo packs. But in this case, it has the ability to monitor motor position and velocity and set up higher levels of, of safety functionality. So these are the four levels or four versions of uh, safety option card functionality that can be implemented. So today we're going to be focused on the safe limited speed. So if you're not familiar with safe limited speed, it's a functionality that when active monitors the motor speed and confirms that it's below a certain level. If the option card detects that the motor speed is above that level, it will then disable the axis. It does not have the power to slow down the motor by itself with a command. It's purely monitoring. It can only disable the axis. So once a safe limited speed has been requested by the safety PLC, the motion controller needs to slow down the motor with a controlled command. And to know how to set up those parameters, there are there's timing diagrams in the manual that go over the important parameters. So the way that we set those parameters is going to be through our Sigma Win Plus software. Those familiar with MotionWorks might want to know if they can get to these parameters via hardware configuration, and that's not possible. All safety parameters need to be set through Sigma Win Plus. So one of the first things to do is to enable a functionality. So for us, we're going to use our function A as safe limited speed. And then there's four other parameters we need to set based off of time and velocities. So we're going to go over those. So the first one's going to be the speed at which the motor's at when the safety input drops requesting safe limited speed. So that by default is up at 3000 RPM. So we're going to leave that alone for demo purposes, but that can be adjusted. The next one's going to be the time in which the motor needs to start decelerating. So that is set to zero by default. Just to give us a little bit of time here, just to show implementation, we'll make it 100. And note the units are in tens of milliseconds. So value of 100 is equal to one second. The next time is going to be the time in which we need to be at a safe limited speed. So that's T2. That by default is 500 or 5 seconds. We'll leave that alone for right now. And then the last one is the velocity or speed that we need to be at once that time has elapsed. So if the motor exceeds that, then it'll be disabled. So we want to know how to set that um, for our machine. It's going to depend on the mechanics that are tied to the motor. Um, I've set up a little demo program in MotionWorks IEC to implement um, sort of a machine configuration. In my machine, my safe limited velocity or safe limited speed is going to be set to 0 0.1 inches per second. And then we need to convert that from inches per second on the machine to actually motor RPM. So this, this calculation here is running through, and that solves it for 48 RPM. So if we go back to Sigma Win Plus, our safe limited constant speed that we're always going to be looking at is going to be 48 RPM. So these values being green aren't actually in the servo pack or safety option card right now. So we'll click on the edited parameters. It'll write those down. And it'll give us a, a little check saying, do we want to write safety parameters? So we do want to do that because it's going to ask for a code to implement those. So the code's always four zeros. And then there's this little dialog box that might be new. Um, you might have seen before. It only happens with safety parameters. So it's confirming that, yes, that's that's really what you want to do. 
So it's going to write those. Then it's going to be another one confirming that what it wrote is actually in there. So it wants, wants your confirmation. And then the last thing is saying that these parameters won't take effect until the, the servo pack's been power cycled um, or it's been a software reset. So we're just confirming that. So in Sigma Win, if you're familiar, oh, just a heads up, you don't have to save this here. This is just for offline parameters. It, it doesn't have to do anything um, with the safety functions. We can just say no for that right now. So in Sigma Win Plus, you can do a software reset. So that's like power cycling the drive. It does take it off of the Mechatronic network, so we'll just have to reset the axis once it's powered up again. Okay, so that's been acknowledged. So what we can do now is look at our MotionWorks program, and then up here at the top, we'll have an alarm on the axis, so we can reset that. And we can enable the servo. And then we set up a webcam here. So in a normal normal operation, we've got a, a fast jog speed here. So definitely not safe. And then we've got a input into our program. It's coming from our, our safety PLC. And when that drops out, that's telling the controller that you need to keep that velocity or speed of the motor below a certain level. So just to give a little fudge factor, um, we actually command about 90% of what we've parameterized the drive for, just so there's no false errors. And then when we run that, our controller is running the motor at a much slower level. So when we actually give the input into the safety option card. I've got a little e-stop here. So you'll see a little flashing light there on the, the servo pack. And then once that's solid, that's actually that those time delays that we'd set up before. It's saying, that, okay, those have passed now and you need to be below a certain value. So as long as you're commanding the motor at a velocity or speed that is below the parameter you set in the servo pack, then it can operate um, as normal. If it exceeds that, then it's going to disable the access. So what we can do is say maybe the, the input into the controller is such that it didn't see that it needs to run slower, or maybe someone changed the program and it's no longer going that, that safe speed. And if we were to clear the our safe limited speed input, so you can see that the drive has uh, no status on it there, and we're running a lot faster. So in this case, we're not going to actually command the motor to slow down. We're just going to activate the safe limited speed. So once we do that, we see our timer and then our time is elapsed and we're still exceeding the velocity. So then that, then the drive uh, creates an alarm and disables the servo motor. And then we have diagnostic on the drive saying that the, the safe limited speed has been exceeded and I've disabled the access. So if we clear the safe limited speed input, we can recover. So just a normal reset, nothing special. And we can enable a servo again. And if our safe limited speed has been cleared, we can keep running again. But if we need to slow down, we can slow down, activate our safe limited speed operation and still function. We can clear that safe limited speed request and then we can go faster. So that's the safety option card implementation. Thank you.